In this video, we're going to learn about JavaScript loops. So I got this question on Reddit from Blue Moon Cheese. He just doesn't understand loops, but he's a visual learner. So let me see if I can explain loops and show you how they work. There are several different types of loops. For, for of, for in, while, do while, and high order array functions such as map and for each. Let's start with the basic for loop. So if we wanted to console log something five times without some sort of a loop, we would have to literally write it five times. But we can control this much better with a loop. So here's the basic construct of a for loop. We start with for, and then the first part is our initialization. So we're going to say let i equal zero. The next part is gonna be our condition. So we'll say as long as i is less than five, and then the next part is our final expression, and this is where we iterate our counter, which is i, i plus plus. And now in here, we can set our console log and say loop. You'll see here that it logged loop five times. So let's go over this again. Here we are initializing a counter, basically. So i which I generally stands for index. And we're going to start it at zero. We could start it at any number that we would like. And then in our condition, we're gonna say, keep going until this condition is false. In this last part, we're incrementing our counter. So in order to see this a little bit better, let's add to this our index. So we can say plus I. And here you'll see loop zero, one, two, three, four. So when it reaches four, it's going to count up to five, but then it's going to check the condition. And, is, and it's going to ask, is i less than five? Well, five is not less than five, so it did not continue on to five. So again, this is going to continuously run until the condition is false. Instead of incrementing, we can also decrement i minus minus, if we did that, we would need i to start at a higher number. So we could say five. We could say as long as i is greater than zero. And now it counts backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. And then when it hits zero, zero is not greater than zero. So it does not print loop zero. And let's change this back to the way that we had it originally. Incrementing is what you're normally going to see instead of decrementing. Another thing that we can do is we could break early. So we could say uh, if i equals three, then break. So break will just stop. And let's see what that does. So it started with zero, it got to one, two, it printed three, but then the condition if i equals three, we want to break or stop. So it did not print four. Another common use for a for loop is to loop through an array. So we can add an array here. Let's say uh, const names equals. We're still going to have an index, so we'll start the index at zero. But this time in our condition, we're gonna say as long as i is less than our array dot length. So our array is four, so as long as i is less than four. This time we want to print each name in the array. And so for our index, we will use our counter or our index. And we'll just comment this break statement out and let's run this. And there we go, John, Bob, Mary, and Joe. Another way of doing this quite a bit easier is by using a for of loop. So let's comment this out. And this time we'll say for name of names. Let me clear the console first. And now we'll console log name. And you'll see the same thing, John, Bob, Mary, and Joe. So what this is doing is deconstructing the array. So it's pulling name out of names. So it's taking each value and assigning it to this name variable. So we can name this first variable here, whatever we want, and then after of, we have to include the array. This way is a lot easier to write and a little bit easier to understand, uh, but just so you know, it is a slight bit slower 
than a normal for loop. And since we're only executing one line of code within this for statement, we actually don't need the curly braces and we could include this all on one line and see that we get the same thing. Now what if we have an object? So let's say that we have a object of user. So an object contains key value pairs. So we'll say first name, and well, that'll be John, and then last name will be Doe. All right, so how do we loop through this? We could use a for loop. Uh, we could also use a for in loop. So here we could say for, and then we can create a variable. I'm just going to call it key, and in user. So for key in user. So it's going to loop through each key. So now we can console log user with the index of key. Since we only have one line, we don't need curly braces again. So let's save that. Actually, so we're not getting confused. Let me comment this one out and now we'll save again. And we see John Doe. So it's looping through each key, first name and then last name, and logging the value of each. So the first time through would be the same as saying console log user first name. And the second time through, it would be the same as saying console log user last name. All right, the next loop that we'll look at is the while loop. So with the while loop, we're going to declare our index outside of the loop. So we'll start by saying let i equal zero. And again, you can name that whatever you'd like. And we'll say while i is less than 10, we want to console log and we'll just console log i. And then here's the important part. We have to increment i within the loop. So we can say i plus equals one, or an easier way to write this is just i plus plus. And that is going to increment i until this condition is false. So when i is equal to or greater than 10, it's going to stop. If we didn't increment i, then this would become an infinite loop and that would lock up your browser. All right, so I'll save this. And we'll see zero through nine. As soon as it hits 10, 10 is not less than 10 so it's not going to print 10. Again, within while, we also have the break condition. So we could say if i equals five, break, and there we go. There is also a continue condition. So to use continue, we wanna make sure that we're incrementing before the continue, otherwise we could again create an infinite loop. So let's say if i equals five, uh, we're gonna continue, but let's bring our console log down to the bottom. So let's see what happens. We'll just save this. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four, no five. So what's happening here is we're incrementing i, and we're saying if i is equal to five, continue. So it's, um, it's like a break. We're gonna stop this loop, but we're gonna continue on to the next loop. So break stops completely, continue stops the current loop and continues to the next loop. The next loop that we'll look at is the do while loop. So it's very similar to the while loop. This time we're going to say do, and we'll just move all of this stuff up here into the do statement, and then while i is less than 10. So if I save this, you'll see that it looks pretty much the same. We're going to do all of this stuff here while i is less than 10. The difference here is that the do statement will always run the first time. It checks for the condition after the do statement has run. So if we say while i is less than zero and we save this, you'll see that it does print one, even though one is not less than zero. So it ran this block of code and then it checked. And since the statement was false, it didn't run the code again. All right, the last loop that we're going to look at is a high order array function. And the one that we're going to look at is the for each high order array function. When it comes to looping through arrays, the for each function is what I always use. So let's go ahead and create another array quickly. 
So what we can do here is we can say animals dot for each, and then we will use an arrow function. So we'll just say v for variable. We can name that whatever we want. We could say we could say animal if we want, and then we're just going to console log animal. All right, we'll save that. Cat, dog, horse, sheep, and bird. Pretty simple. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. But before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. If my videos have helped you in any way and you have the means to do so, support me on Patreon. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.